It is 6.35 and our in-depth coverage of the president's address continues this morning. Joining us live in studio are Eyewitness News political analyst Joe Fleming. Joe ended up sleeping over yesterday. Um, just, you know, we made him comfortable on the roadshow couch. Just teasing Joe. Thanks for joining us. We, of course, know that My you pleasure. watched the uh, address in its entirety yes. last night. And what did you make of his speech overall? Well, overall, I think Donald Trump and his people are very excited this morning. I think Donald Trump gave a speech last night just what they wanted. It was calm. He was on message. He did not deviate from the teleprompter. I think this was really good for Donald Trump. He really came across as a president. And I think the people of the country are going to respond to that. You know, I, I actually saw one analyst saying that there was a moment where it appeared that he became president in that moment last night. I would tend to agree with that. I mean, he really acted presidential last night. I think this is not good if you're a Democrat in trying to oppose Donald Trump. Because I think right now it's going to help his uh, job rating in the country. People are going to respond to what they're seeing. They're seeing a new Donald Trump. The question is, can he continue this over the next week and months, or does it go back to the old Donald Trump? And speaking of Democrats, you know, he called for cooperation across the aisle on some of the key issues. But do we start to see any progress in bringing some Democrats on board? So far, it's been resistant pretty much across the board from them. I think in some areas you will. Infrastructure, for example. I think the Democrats want to get infrastructure for the different states, so I think they'll come around that way. I think on the Obamacare, they're going to really try to hold their ground. I think there's some very conservative Republicans who aren't, don't think the president's going far enough, so they might be able to do some leverage there. Mm -hmm. But I think there are some areas where the Democrats will work with the president. You know, the president said last night that he wants to try to have Congress approve a $1 trillion infrastructure plan to rebuild the nation's right. roads, bridges, airports. Where the money is going to come from, we're not right. sure. But if an investment like that comes along, what could it mean for Rhode Island? I mean, we have some of the most challenged infrastructure in the country. We, we do, but also keep in mind, we have road work starting already. We're having a lot of bridges and roads being repaired. This could bring more money in. It could move that process up quicker, possibly, depending on how much money comes in the state of Rhode Island. So this could be a windfall for the state. And, you know, the president also last night, he renewed his call to uh, repeal, replace Obamacare, right. still calling it a disaster. Uh, because of Medicaid laws expansion, though, about 22,000 Rhode Islanders now have coverage. So if right. the funding is taken away, what would that mean for our state? Well, again, that's where it could hurt Rhode Island mm. for the simple reason that simply if we want to keep that coverage, the state has to pick that up. And again, it's going to put a burden on our state budget programs they're trying to put in now may have to be held back. So again, depending on if that's cut badly, Rhode Island's going to have to pick it up in the area, that area. So there are some pluses and minuses in what the president wants to do for the state of Rhode Island. All right, Joe, thank you so much. A lot to cover. We'll be checking in with you again <laughs> yep. later this morning for more analysis. And you can find uh, more analysis on our website right now. WPRI.com is a place to go. In-depth coverage now of President Trump's address to Congress last night. Political analyst Joe Fleming back with us again this morning to break it all down. And going into it uh, last night, Joe, we didn't know what to expect from Correct. President Trump because of his tone over the first 30 days in office. But looked much more presidential last night. Very presidential last night. I think Donald Trump reset his presidential uh, president last night. Basically, Donald Trump came across very presidential. He came across as calm, collective. I think it really made the American people feel at ease with Donald Trump. And I think it's a good stop for Donald Trump. The question is, can he continue this over the next few months? All right. Well, obviously, he's reading off a teleprompter last night. It's a prepared right. speech. It's not one of those press conferences where he kind of not only goes off the cuff, but goes off the rails sometimes. True. So uh, can, is, is this the real guy or is the guy? We, I think the guy we see during those press conferences and those interviews is is the real president. That may be the real president. However, I think this president is starting to learn. You can't basically say what you want all the time. You have to really control yourself and what you say because every word you say, everyone listens to and everyone responds to. I think last night Donald Trump stayed on message and I think that was a big plus for him. I think he's going to learn over time that this is the best way to go for him. All right. Immigration, of course, been a huge thing right. in his administration so far and in the campaign. Protests all over the country, all over the world for that matter. How did the president do last night in continuing to push that part of his agenda, and will the tone maybe change in the country? Well, he added a little bit new to his immigration last night. He talked about immigration reform, trying to work with Democrats and Republicans to come up with an actual immigration plan. It's been tried in the past. It hasn't worked. This might be an olive branch to the Democrats to try to do some things to keep the dreamers in the country. It's really softening his tone a little bit. But again, there's no meat on the bones at this point. It's just what he's talking about. Uh, a lot of talk about the defense budget and how much money he wants to put towards that Correct. part of his budget. It's a lot. And there's other things, too, that you think about, boy, that's a lot of money there. Here's a lot of money here. Right. Doesn't want to spend a lot of money here. And it's all sounding like it makes sense. But we were talking off camera that right. something's got to give Something here. has to give. He's talking about infrastructure. He's talking about business tax cuts. He's talking about uh, middle class tax relief. 
if he does these things, the money has to come from somewhere. The deficit's going to balloon if he does not make cuts. He's talking about cutting other things, but really some of those tr cuts would be very drastic. I don't see those happening. I think Donald Trump's a person that will give you the big idea. He's going to let Congress work out the details. Well, that's what we talked about before, too, is Congress. It's now the, the ball's sort of in their court now. Correct. And how much do you think he's going to say, all right, here's what I want to do, you take it and then maybe step back a little bit? Well, I think he's going to try to work with them as much as possible. I think we're already seeing that with the Affordable Care Act, that he's working with Congress. I think he's going to realize that it's not business anymore. You can't just say something. You have to work with other people. So I think he's going to step back a little bit. He's going to listen to Congress, and he's going to compromise with the Republicans. The thing is, though, he needs some Democrats to come on board with him, especially in the Senate, because a lot of legislation needs 60 votes to get through. All right. Thank you, Joe. Joe's back in the next hour with more expert analysis at uh, about 820. We also have a live report from Washington, D.C.